Welcome to Kentuckiana Real Talk, hosted by Jeremy Ward. If you enjoy the podcast, please subscribe on the podcast provider of your choice and consider subscribing to the Jeremy Ward Team YouTube channel for more expert real estate insights. Now, let's start the show. Hello, it's Jeremy Ward, and today I have the pleasure to interview Christina McKim with McKim Real Estate Team of Ward Realty Services. Christine and I go back quite a while. Uh, we High grew up, school. Yeah, we grew up in the same little town together out in Elizabeth, Indiana. The OGs. That's right. <laughs> We're the OGs of the four-way. But uh, Christine and I started working together, I think, in 2016. That's correct, March. Uh, she had been with a uh, very prominent brand in our area and decided she'd want to join the team and see how that would work. And Well, she come on and just soaked up a ton of information and did everything we asked of her. I can still remember her helping me while I was out in Washington yep. speaking for, uh, I think, Zillow or Tom Ferry once. Mm -hmm. And uh, she had a listing that we had got together, and she just absolutely knocked it out. And we've been rolling ever since. Rolling. Uh, yeah. I mean, seriously, like it was like yeah. five or six of us, and you were on the team, and you were doing like 60 deals a year. and By myself, yeah. By Without yourself. Seth, because he wasn't in real estate at that time. That's right. Seth didn't join you uh, until, what, maybe a year and a half, two years later? Yeah. I was rolling my minivan with all three kids. I think <laughs> Lily was, I think Lily was like nine months old. Yeah, she was showing, little. Yeah, showing houses. They were just stay in the car. Lots of fast food there in those days. Oh yeah. Well, I can remember. <laughs> you know, Lily. Uh, I would always buddy with Lily because she's a little. You know, she's yeah. just. I mean, she wasn't that tall. It didn't right. seem like. And now I've seen her at the Lanesville Heritage Weekend. We had the fire truck, and Seth had brought her down, and she told me I was her other daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said, well, you're my other blonde daughter. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And uh, she's just a cutie, but it's yeah. been good to get to know the family and kids. Uh, They've but... grown up with the Ward family. Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I think Daphne was seven when we started. Yeah. yeah. My girls were young. Now they're mm -hmm. grown. It's It's been a minute. It's been so, a minute. Since then, you and Seth, had, uh, Seth came aboard the team, did an awesome job. You guys were rocking it out and were doing so well that you could actually start your own team. Yeah. And how's that been going for you? It's been going good. You know, everything's possible with Jeremy Ward knowledge. <laughs> well, we, we try to help out, but you guys are doing the work and yeah. done an amazing job. Um, I've watched your all's numbers grow year after year. And every once in a while, you'll call me and be like, I don't know, Jeremy, it's, <laughs> is, how's the market? And I'm like, eh, same as always, it's just got to work. Got to work a little harder. And I think it was a few days ago we were talking about, you know, people having million dollar months yep. and, and all this stuff that's going on we're seeing. And then, I think you had a million million dollar day the other day. One point one. One point one in one day. That's in one awesome. One day. I mean, that's amazing. I feel like I should get a Ward Realty Yeti cup for that. Well, there might be something down the road for you. <laughs> I mean, we did get you a princess crown. I did get it by princess count. We should totally put that on there. She's a, I should wore that today. Yeah, you should have inside the office. She's known as our princess. So. <laughs> oh, no. In a very loving way. That's right. We always tease Christina. <laughs> so, what else is going on? What uh, yeah. What have you been up to? You know, we. We started this program with um, Marcus Hunley and Land Title Group that we're going around Harrison County and feeding teachers. Nice. Because teachers are important. I mean, they're like the front front line for our kids. So we've been bringing Chick-fil-A. We've hit Corden Elementary in New Middletown this, this month. So if you're in Harrison County, we're coming. That's awesome. Well, yeah. I see a lot of your all signs at the ball courts in Lanesville. Yeah. And... We love to sponsor uh, kids' events. Kids are awesome, you know. Obviously, because I have my own. Um, I get upset when people don't ask me to sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> if yeah. anybody needs a sponsor, <laughs> Christine is your girl. Yeah, we love, I mean, you know, sports are important for kids and their development. Seth loves to coach anyway. Yeah. So we just love it. Like, we will sponsor their shirts. We sponsored, I think one year we sponsored the Lanesville softball girls, like entire season. Mm -hmm. We did their dinners, their uniform. We did it all. Oh, and we loved it. It's amazing when somebody in the community will step up for these kids. You know, yeah. uh, it's even in our little community, you know, you were talking about the teachers mm -hmm. and all they do. And a lot of people don't know, you know, behind the scenes, these teachers are bringing food in for their kids because they oh, know yeah. the kids that are not getting mm -hmm. fed or, you know, something's happening. They, they're they missing dinner or they're missing breakfast, mm -hmm. whatever. And I would encourage everybody to get in with some of these teachers and and. Find out where the needs are in a community because, as you know, they they know they see it day to day. Right, and like and like you as well. Like we do a lot of stuff. We don't post on Facebook because no. we don't do it for the clout. We do it because it's the right thing. Well, to kids do. need to eat. Yeah, <laughs> kids need clothes. You know, they need that kind of stuff. They need their. They want to play baseball. We couldn't. You know, before real estate, we were broke. We couldn't even afford for their, our kids to play sports. Well, tell tell our viewers a little bit more about that. I know we we had talked about it a few times. And, <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, we didn't come from the silver plate we or, did or not. nothing like we that. Did not. And, so I think you were you were telling me you guys was eating uh, was it spaghetti one spaghetti night spaghetti all week sometimes <laughs> and rice know? and beans and beans and rice and, and canned <laughs> crap you know but it was all a journey to get where we are today yeah and I think that's one thing you know kind of giving back to the kids is that your testimony your story they can look up to you that somebody that didn't right. you know come from a bunch not that that's bad either mm -hmm. but you know you guys worked your tail off you had a go. Uh, we right. I remember setting goes with you and said, yep. and here we are, you've done it. Yep. And uh, not only have you done it for yourself and your family, but you're trying to help others. And I just, uh, that's the heart of our business. I think that's oh, amazing. Yeah. It's so important to give back. And again, you don't have to put it on social media. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's being done. Right. Board like, season. You know, you know what you've done. That's right. That comes back. Yeah, right? absolutely. Absolutely. So, so what, uh, what's your and Seth's goes for the rest of the year? Oh my gosh. I, I think it's what Plus about 20 more. 20 more. Only? Only, only 20, 20 more? I mean, that's the goal. We'll probably do more, but... Uh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think about the market? What What's your opinion of the market right now? I mean, the market's slower than it has been through COVID. Um, you know, rates have gone up, but that's... I don't think that's a big deal because we're not currently in highest and best $60,000 over appraisal, no appraisal situations. So it really kind of evens out. So mm -hmm. you're getting the house at a better price and then you just refinance it. Right. Like it makes sense. Date the rate. And Date refi. the rate. Like, you, yeah, the rates might be a little higher, but again, you're not paying $60,000 over list. Right. And not, and yeah. Well, and I know Tom Ferry had told us a few years back when all this was going on, he said, you know, it's not going to be a matter of getting a good deal. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a matter if you can get a house. Right. Because the shortage. We still have a shortage of houses. And, and that there is why the, the rates are up. They're trying to slow it down, you know. Mm -hmm. and the, let the builders I, I, catch up. Let the builders catch up. And it's a, it's a really good market out there. I think it's more like what we were seeing in 15, 16. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Minus the inventory. Minus the inventory. And the rates are about the same. Yeah. Oh, they're, well, they're five and a half, six percent. But, right. you know, I, my first house was eight and a half percent. And that's with a really good credit score. My <laughs> right. wife was a nurse. I was at Ford. Like, I mean, we were good clients. 19% in the 80s was good. So, you know. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we have, it's not near that bad yet as well, far as rates. And also, you know, renters, well, the, the renting prices are so high. My niece was going to rent a, an apartment and it was like $1,800. And I was like, shook. So you yeah, buy a house for that. How do people spend eighteen hundred dollars a month on rent? I mean, I'm a landlord, and some of mine's mm -hmm. sixteen, seventeen hundred for a house. Um, I'm thankful that they're renting. Right. Obviously, there's an option for them. But the, on the other side, I go, why don't you guys just buy a house? Right. Y you know, it's still cheaper. It's still cheaper, and it's, it's yours. We build equity. I think we're going to see house prices aren't going to go down. Mm -hmm. They're going back up. Yeah, as long as there's a shortage, they're just going to keep going up. I know right now people, you know, we have a normal slowdown in fall. Usually mm -hmm. it's it's not dramatic. Right. Uh, but it does soften a little bit. Uh, one thing I am seeing right now, promising, and you are probably as well, is there is a little more inventory coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, so it gives, as you said, the buyers more options, less exactly. competition. Exactly. Uh, and I think it's going to turn to be, to be uh, just kind of the market. Is, this is the way that market's going to be for the next three, four years. I don't think right. that a person can wait it out. Everybody keeps asking me if it's going to crash. I'm like, it's not. Cra we're not crashing. We're not in the 2008 bank wars. That's what I call it. Yeah, not not the same market. <laughs> um, so you're going to do about another 20 homes. You feel pretty positive about the market. It's not crashing. Yeah, I mean, I'm with you there. If you're a good real estate agent, and you have good brokerage. Like Jeremy's amazing with oh, great guidance you. and you know appreciation for what he knows. So you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. You just right. got to work a little harder. Yeah, <laughs> yep, yep. You're going to work a little harder. You know the. The deals aren't just falling out of the sky right now. You got to put them together. Put and them that's together. more what we're used to doing. Right. Um, you know, before it was a fluke. And mm -hmm. I describe the COVID market kind of like, you know, if you've you ever been going down the expressway, surely you've never sped before, Christine. <laughs> I, know, I know you do the speed limit. I do not. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're going down the road, say, let's say you're going 80 mile an hour. Right. And you slow down to 55, it feels like you're crawling. Right. That's where we're at. That's where we're at. Like it was going so fast and crazy that it slowed down just a little bit, mm -hmm. but it's not slow. It's not slow. Like we're it's still, busy. still moving. I think we've sold 35 already this year. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, I mean, that's about our pace anyway. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty normal and that's strong. Right. Um, and there's just two of you. Exactly. And and one of you is taking care of the kids while the other one's working. So it's right. not like you're both out right. you know, working the whole time. That's true. 
that somebody's working at home, somebody's working out on the real mm -hmm. estate business, and you guys pair up pretty good. Like you're all able to mm -hmm. work together and, and get deals Everybody done. Everybody always asks how we can work together. How we, I'm like, because I married him and I love him, <laughs> and he's super hot. He's my lumber snack, so I'd like to be with him. Right, right. Why yeah, not? not to say that we don't like knock each other out every now and again, but somebody's got to take charge. Every I mean, Seth is in charge. <laughs> He's not here, so we can say that. He is, he is. Like, he'll let me do whatever I want. He's like, you're going to jail. You cannot do that. I'm <laughs> yeah. like, okay. That's right. You can't, you can't beat up uh, other realtors for you cannot. for doing wrong things. I know. The law will take care of it. Yeah, I'm oh. What else you guys got going on? Any big events you got planned coming up? We have our client appreciation Halloween party. That's going to be amazing. Now, how many years have you been doing that? 11. This is your 11th annual Halloween yep. party. For your clients. My kids are so tired of having parties. Well, I was getting ready to say you're kind of the event planner. I am. I like parties. I just like them. Um, but this is for, like, we have our clients come out and friends, too. And we do giveaways. And we have a DJ and food and a tent. Bartender. We have a bartender who's our office manager. We have a free <laughs> cash. We have a free bar, not cash. Free bar. It's pretty, like it. it's pretty awesome. We do a costume contest. People are serious. Yeah, I seen some of the costumes last year. I was like, I was afraid to come because I couldn't be that creative. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one of my niece of Cynthia's friends, um, uh, Laura, w was Groot. Her kids were Groot and the raccoon, and she was Gamora. And oh, she wow. looked just like Gamora. I mean, she was a makeup artist. I mean, it was, I was like, oh, my. I, that was the one. It was the green. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I, mean, like, I was like, wow, okay. And then when Ursula was there, I was, I was one of the... Hocus Pocus witches. That was fun. Seth was some sexy. Of course. I want to say gladiator, but that's wrong. I don't know. I guess mad when I call it wrong. Spartan. He was Spartan. Because he gets his costumes from sexycostumes.com. That's what I tell him. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you two are a trip. Uh, other than that. Oh, then I have Daphne's. Daphne's having a masquerade ball for her birthday. Her 16th birthday. Just a little small thing. She's nice. excited about that. That's all the parties this year. Nothing for Lily. No, well, no, she has her birthday in June. It's in June. It's June, so we'll, we'll deal with that next year. <laughs> we'll do that next year. So, Christine, I know you've been doing this for quite some time, and we all have, like, these stories that stick out in our mind of, like, maybe the funniest <laughs> deal, worst deal, best deal. What's a deal that comes to your mind, maybe when you were showing houses or just a deal that you had to work through in the past years? Oh, man. Uh, me and snakes. Listen, I'll do spiders all day long, but I'm out at snake. And I'm telling you, one time I was showing this house in Borden, and it was bacon. It was a fixer upper that we were walking through like thigh high grass. Oh. And I had went in the house for something. And all of a sudden I look out the window and a snake falls off the roof. <laughs> and I looked at my clients because it fell right in front of them. So I'm out. You're I'll be at the car. Uh, because that came from the house, probably. It was on the roof. <laughs> they were like, oh my gosh, we love snakes. And I was like, well, it's probably good. Perfect house snake. for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. I went to a, and then I went into a crawl space one time well cellar not a crawl space and I looked to my left and the snake it was like a really jagged bricks and there was a snake just like I don't know what's mean <laughs> you and Seth had sent me a picture of a snake at one of the houses that you were showing maybe that was it no that was in Lanesville yeah okay. let's talk about that one yes so Seth and Lily because she was young we took her showings mm -hmm. they went back to this back barn and they're like, come out here and look. And I come out there and it's this little shed. Lily's on Seth's shoulders. And there are two huge, and I mean huge, like six foot black snakes hanging out of this bucket that's hanging on the ceiling. What is happening right now? <laughs> bucket of snakes. Lily's like, look at the snakes. I was like, no, I'm good. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Oh, mm -mm. that is my snake stories. Mm -hmm. Now, there was a house in Lanesville that, that, that a guy, I guess, kept snakes. And then one of the snakes actually had got a hold of him or something, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Didn't that house come up for sale? I sold that house. Yeah. That was my I, friend's house. I thought that was. I yeah. mean, it was kind of a sad deal, but it was like, I never knew that they had those kind of snakes in homes in Lanesville. Yeah. Yeah. I don't do snakes. Yeah. I'm not much of snakes. If you see me running, it was probably a snake. You know, and I've had people do crazy things. Like the basements are flooded because they're picks uppers. I'm like, I'm going to get in there. I'm like, the electric is still on. <laughs> I feel like this is a bad idea. So I'm like, disclaimer, if you die not my fault mm -hmm. just people do some crazy stuff sometimes about my all my that i can think of my crazy story yeah you'll think of more when you oh, when yeah. you're driving today you'll be like oh yeah what was that but yeah we've sold so many it just gets it does well and i think that's the thing for for the public 
a lot of the perception of realtors is we just stick a sign in the yard and magically this thing right. sells and the buyers just pop out of the sky and it closes. But we're really like bartenders for we're really like bartenders. We're fixing problems. We're couple counseling. We're fixing problems before we tell them there's a problem, which is a huge, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they don't need to know everything behind the scenes that can be fixed before it's fixed. Yeah. That's just my philosophy. Well, there's no sense getting everybody upset until at least you know the answer. Right. You know, let's figure it out and then let's let's propose what the situation is and here's how we think we can fix it. And then the buyer seller gets to Absolutely. decide. But yeah, there's no sense freaking everybody out until there's mm-hmm. a reason to freak out. Yeah. And I see that so much in our business. People tend to just freak out. There's some emotional responders out there for sure. Yeah. There's also some realtors. You should never use a realtor, in my opinion, whose house payment depends on you closing a transaction. That that kind of matters. <laughs> I mean, they're not going to look out for your best interests. That's just my opinion. Right, right. Yeah. And, you know, lenders matter. Mm-hmm. Lenders are a huge part of that. If there's a problem, they can fix them. And, you know, as part of this team of brokers, we have some really great ones. We have Sonny Brody, Marcus Hunley, and Chris Squires are like my top three favorite people in life. They can just fix basically anything. So if you, um, if you're a uh, head, what would you, if you had a seller ask you, Christina, what's my first step? Um, if I want to list my house, what, how would you go about that? Well, first you need to make sure you can buy a new house. Well, that's true. <laughs> so you're saying basically you need to get a hold of a lender, even though they're going to be a seller. Right. That makes sense. Because you, what if you sell, what if we go to list that house and we get an offer, but you haven't done that, and then you can't buy one. Right. Then what are we doing? Then you're stuck. Yeah. You could possibly be homeless. Then you're we homeless. Have, we haven't had that happen yet, but there's a lot of hustling that had to go on to get right get that home locked down <laughs> in 30 days because the other one was so. Right, right. What about buyers? What's your best piece of advice for a buyer today? Same thing. Same thing. You know, the reason that's so important, especially for first-time home mm-hmm. buyers, is you may think you want a $200,000 house, but you may not like that payment. You may think you want a $150,000 house, but you don't like the condition and you can do a 300000 I think it's so important to, to know what you can afford. Nobody wants to be house broke. And people get upset and you're like, can you do a pre-approval? Well, there's not, you shouldn't be upset. Like you're going to somebody's house and they think you can buy it. Mm-hmm. It's important to be able to be able to buy it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, most realtors are, are uh, informing their sellers that they're going to be bringing in pre-approved buyers. Right. We're not going to waste your time. Because mm-hmm. they um, have to pack up sometimes their kids, their dogs, their mother-in-law to leave that house for a house mm-hmm. that you may not be able to buy. Yeah. That's just not okay. Well, it's kind of like you said too. They may think that they can only buy a $200,000 house and right. find out after getting pre-approved, maybe they can go two fifty dollars three if they need to. Exactly. And maybe they don't want to. That's uh, okay but, too. But they have that if they see that, you know how it is. Yep. They walk in, they go, this is it. This is the one. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, it's 50000 over what he was approved for. They don't care because they want it. They want it. They go mm-hmm. back to the bank and they get the money. Yeah. So. I agree. The first thing anybody needs to do is go see what they can afford. Absolutely. And then that gives you the the knowledge of moving forward where they even want to sell their house or not. Because they may, in some right. situations, be like, it's better off to stay here mm-hmm. and remodel and add on. Exactly. And so I think that's the thing. If you're thinking about buying or selling, I really feel like you need to get a hold of a realtor, get a hold of a lender, and mm-hmm. just see what your options are. Absolutely. I mean, you know, and everyone, including yourself in this brokerage, we're not pushy. Like, if you love the house, let's buy it. If you don't, let's look at 20 more until you find the one you love. That's right. I don't need you to buy the first one. That's not my job. My job, I'm going to tell you what's wrong with it before I tell you what's right with it. Yeah. Well, that's the thing about your experience. You've been around long enough. You can pretty much walk in and tell this is going to be a problem. That one's not a I mean, there's a six-inch gap in the trim on the floor. There's probably something going on there. Yeah, the floors <laughs> might have dropped. And why did that drop? <laughs> yeah, there's some questionable stuff going on here. You know, because we're, Seth and I are familiar with older homes, so it's really easy for us to go in there and be like, well, it's 200 years old. The floor is going to be wavy. Like, that's normal. That's char- it's the character of the home. Right. Tell us a little more, uh, you, you know, that, that reminds me, you guys bought a farmhouse. We did. In oh, it. man. I love that farmhouse. That house was so cool. How old, <laughs> when was that built? 1890. 1890. We bought it from the original family. Wow. It had never been sold. Um, my gosh. We put about $100,000 in that house. That was Seth's love. Seth, don't watch this episode. Yes, he had a hard time handing the keys over. He did not want to sell it, but um, full disclosure, didn't like the back neighbor. <laughs> right, right. Well, and I remember that you you telling me I love everything about this house except the back neighbor. But the, just the neighbors are not getting along or something. Oh, she yeah. Well, you know, she had lived in the house. 
and she married it was married to the guy that owned it and they got divorced and so there were some emotions there there was and some maybe some uh entitlement to it mm-hmm. anyway it was just that's a whole other story but after you so, got done with that house oh, yeah. i remember it going like viral it went it viral went. it did so it uh it got i didn't put it on there it got put on for the love of this old home and it went we had people from like washington flying in oregon las vegas California. It was crazy. Texas. We had people making offers over the phone. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was it was so awesome because so, it was such a cool house. I know Seth has a passion for that stuff. Mm-hmm, he does. Um, so I would say if anybody out there is looking for like an older home, a farmhouse, something with a lot of character, these are the guys you probably want to call. They've lived it. They've breathed it. They flipped them. <laughs> well, yeah, they we know had, what to look for. And, we and had to rebuild the foundation on that one. Yeah. I mean, that was pretty much almost a whole gut job. There. We did. We got at the entire first floor. We all new floor joists, all new floor. I mean, it was wild. It was yeah, wild. but it was beautiful. It was, beautiful. Got done with it was it. so beautiful. Seth took a lot of the old aspects of the house, like the flooring, the subfloor, and he accented different pieces in the house. It was really cool. Uh, it was a cool house. But I, like I remember that. being on the roof one day, checking it out with you guys. That was a uh, that was fun. That was fun. Yeah. What was it three story? It was three stories. Yeah. Because I know Seth and I climbed up on the porch, and then we put another ladder to go up to the next, and, and then, then the next, up to the yep. top, we were looking at chimney or something. Oh, yeah. that, uh, that was a cool place. It was a cool place. Are but you going to buy another one? Another farmhouse? Farmhouse living's not for me. You like the modern conveniences, the good insulation, the, the non-leaking windows, I the do. doors that shut, the floors that don't squeak. I like my electrical outlets. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I might. It just depends on the house. If it's on a lake, maybe. Lake's yeah, my next house. That's what you want. Or or creek. Some waterfront. Now, yeah. you've got a new listing coming I do. Up. I was going to say, I, got, I wish I could buy that one. It's going to be like over a million. That one's awesome. It's like 7,000 square feet. It's got like a huge, huge outbuilding. It's 25 acres and in, in the back of it's Buck Creek. Oh, wow. It's an amazing property. Well, you go out and sell a few more houses. You could probably do that. Right. I could sell other <laughs> Seth houses. Seth might tell you no. <laughs> right, I think you've got a pretty nice place for you at now. Yeah, so. it's great. It's not Seth's favorite. He'll be okay. Well, y'all remodeled that one. You bought we it at an auction. <laughs> we did buy it at an auction. It was a mess. Cat pee and, oh my gosh, that thing had n- never been maintained. What would you, your piece of advice would be for somebody that's thinking about buying something that's a total remodeled, uh, you know, what to be scared of or not to be scared of? Well, anything can be fixed if you have the right amount of cash. Mm-hmm. So I don't, nothing really scares me. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what scares me. It's remodeled old houses. Well, somebody else you, has been in there. Because and... I remember one time you telling me, Christine, that's 100 years of everybody else's remodel. Yeah. So if it's like like the one we bought was in original condition. Mm-hmm. It never been updated. Um, so that was okay. But I don't want to buy anything. Been through like six remodels. I, somebody told me one time, uh, you know, it had vinyl siding on. He says, that vinyl siding right there cover, will cover 100 years of sin, <laughs> previous sin, you know. And so or when you peel that of... back, yeah, you know telling what you're getting. Right. So I would say that's good advice. It really depends on your, you know, how much cash you got to put into it. It's your it. comfort level, really. And, you know, we did that farmhouse with a 203K loan, which mm-hmm. is a renovation loan. So, you know, um, when we put the hundred thousand dollars into it, that just went on top of what we paid for it. So you you do have other financing options to be able to buy a house. Yeah, you don't have to have cash. You can do the we did the renovation loan on the farmhouse, which is it's an amazing loan product. We got to defer payments for like six months. Um, you know, they you have to have specialists. Like if you're doing like foundation work, we had to have a foundation guy come. Sure. Uncle Bob couldn't do it. You know, right. Daddy couldn't do it. Thankfully, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's a great loan product, and they still do those today. So if you find a house that needs. Any kind of work like that. Even if you want to put a pool in, you can put a pool in with a renovation loan. No kidding. Pole barn, anything. Yeah, as long as it's conventional renovation. So basically, they're going to go in. They're going to say, okay, the house as it is is worth X. You're going to put X amount of money in it. The house will be worth this now. Okay, great. It'll appraise. We'll go ahead and loan you the money to have contractors repair the house. And at the end of it, they just it's a closed deal. So, yeah. So, if it's a $100,000 house, you put 100000 in it. At the end of the day, you're, you have to, you're closing at 200000 200. You don't close, though, until... Um, I'm sorry, you do close. You do close, and then the actual lender pays out the contractors. It's kind of like a construction loan. It They're is. They're going to get draws. But you only have that. to, you know, you do a three, you can do a 3% conventional loan on it, or two, three or five, and then FHA is 3.5%. So it's still a low down payment. Yeah. And you get to do all the work you want. I think that's a great option, especially in this market where Mm -hmm. the inventory is tight. So people are having to find fixer-uppers, fixer-uppers, homes that are really bad shape that nobody wants to mess with. And if you don't have the cash, there are loan products 
My uh, first deal ever was a renovation loan. No kidding. My first deal ever. Not Chris, Squires. Chris Squires. Yeah. Chris Squires. My first deal ever. I mean, talk about jumping in there. I was like, what is going on? What are we doing? But we made it through. He's the man when it comes to 203K. Yes, they have a whole department dedicated to it. Yeah, he's uh, Chris Squires with Interlink. He's he's amazing, especially on the 203Ks. Oh, yeah. So, well, it sounds like you guys have been busy and been, as usual, keeping busy. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys buy and flip next because I know <laughs> there'll be another one right around the corner. Yeah. I mean, we're still buying in this market and flipping. Yeah, I'm still I'm still looking. I'm trying to buy myself. And uh, like I say, I, I would say that I would tell people to be confident in the market mm -hmm. and really... I mean, as long as the supply is low, the prices are going to keep going up. Exactly. I mean, so, we're still looking to buy houses. Absolutely. If you guys are in the market to buy or sell a house, uh, especially if you're looking for somebody that has some background on maybe older homes, mm -hmm. flip houses, that sort of stuff, I'd advise you to give Christina and Seth a call. Christina, what's the best way to get a hold of you? 502-807-0099, uh, or you can find me on Facebook. Is it just Christina McKim or McKim Realty? Uh, there's both. Kim Team. I'm also really good with double wines. Yep. No, she is the queen of double wines in Harrison queen. County. And there's a lot to that that people probably don't understand with the foundation inspections, loss of titles. Mm -hmm. If there's a HUD plate missing. I've done it all. She's done it all. Done she it knows all. who to call and how to get it done. I literally call her when I have that problem. Because <laughs> <laughs> it comes up. A lot of these a double lot. wines have been remodeled. Yep. And they've thrown away the original tags, the HUD tags. Sometimes you can't find the tongue that's got the VIN yep. number on it. Yep. And then, or they you, built a porch on it to the house. You can't do that. You know, they, <laughs> they've removed the uh, cabinets and all the the Stay weather sure. plates and all that's mm -hmm. gone. So, if you if you think you're in that position, Christina McKim would be the one you want to call. Thank you, thank you. Because uh, honestly, we've had to call her on several of them, you know, to get them closed because she's done enough of them. To know. <laughs> so we'll give you the princess crown and the queen of double wide trailers. <laughs> I love it. I appreciate you guys tuning in. For more local real estate information, please subscribe and like to the Jeremy Ward Team YouTube channel.